So now we have checked for our crossing brake lines and we don't have any in this project at the moment. So we're ready to create our tin. So to create a tin in 12D or a triangulation, which is a surface, we simply go up to tins, create, and go to triangulate data. The first thing you want to type in here is the new tin name. So in here, I'm going to type a name in called survey. Be sure to press enter after you type the name in because once you press enter, you can see it automatically populates the model for tin name and puts the prefix of tin in front, which is very handy. Saves you doing the work. And then once I do that, I simply copy the model for tin name and paste it into the function name. Preserve strings. I'm going to leave this ticked on because as you can see, most of our data is string lines or strings. Basically, this stops triangles cutting through these strings and forces the edge of the triangle along any strings. Remove bubbles. I'm going to leave ticked off. You only ever tick this on if you want to triangulate contour data. Triangulate data, I'm going to leave this off too. This basically replicates if you had triangles of a DWG and you want to make a surface or a tin exactly how those triangles are, well then you would tick this on and that will replicate that. Weed tin automatically turns on when you turn on the triangle data and weed tin just gets rid of the duplicate vertices at the common points of the triangles. We're going to leave them both off. And cell method is only used for LiDAR data, for large data sets. Usually tick that on if you've got 1 million points or over. Create many, I'm going to leave ticked off, but what this does, if you leave this on, if you go to, if I press triangulate now, this will stay in this panel and give me the option to triangulate more data. I'm going to leave it ticked off because once I triangulate this data, I don't want to create any more triangulations. I only want to create the one triangulation. So once we've filled out the general tab, we now go over to the data tab. And in here, I'm simply going to triangulate all my data in my view one. Data polygon, I'm going to leave blank for the moment. I don't have a data polygon, but what I'm going to do is go to the nulling tab. For the moment, I'm going to leave nulling turned off and I'll show you a bit more what nulling does. If I don't apply the nulling now and go to triangulate, one thing to notice too is before you press triangulate, always check the Z min and Z max values to make sure you've got no zero values or negative 999 crazy data that's going to create massive spikes in your triangulation. So now I left click on triangulate and it will now pop up the re-triangulation panel. So if I had the cre create many ticked on, it would stay in the create panel, not the recreate triangulation panel, which is, has now gone to. If I now go to the plus icon and scroll down, I can turn on my tin survey and I'm just going to toggle off my contours and we can see there's my triangulation and we've got a lot of long triangles in here, which we need to use nulling to get rid of. Because if I move my tin to the back of my string so I can see my strings better, if I go to view, send tins rasters to back, you can now see the strings a lot better. As you can see, there's a lot of data, a lot of triangles through here we need to null.